So it, it's it's widespread in terms of of putting the country in a, in, in a real uh, uh, in a real mess. I was yeah. going to use some selected words that are probably not 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 good for YouTube. So yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to tame myself. I've been told I speak. Uh, we can yeah, always bleep yeah. Language, so. yeah, there yeah. you go. Right? But too many bleeps. I mean, uh, it's embarrassing. <laughs> so I mean, I, I there is there is a there is light at the end of the tunnel, uh, light mm. that really wasn't there before Sunday's election, yesterday's election. Hey, hey, we're back with another episode of the Deals Podcast with the Josiah and San Paula Rojas. This episode will be a little different because we're going to be talking about recent elections in Argentina and Ecuador and what this could mean for the mining sector and some viewer Q&A, uh, which is uh, a new addition. And we're going to close with Cotelco's debt and Cisco's views that were reported um, not, not very long ago. So, hi, Lucho. How are hey, you? Hey, Paula, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's always, we don't have a sunset today, but we, we're here. <laughs> we're here. Well, we're going to have to start recording a little earlier to get the sunset. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have to do that because, yeah, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice detail. Um, so we wanted to get started with the, these, uh, the elections, um, the news in regard to elections and the election process and all that. Um, so we want to start with Ecuador, right? Yeah, I mean, Ecuador, I'm, 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 I know Ecuador quite well because I'm a director of Atico Mining, which has a project in Ecuador. But uh, actually, with you looking at a couple of deals, we've been following Ecuador, right? Two weeks ago, you know, Ecuador and mining were two words that were you weren't going to be able to mix. I mean, mining seemed dead in Ecuador. Uh, after yesterday's elections, you know, maybe they're back to life. So is there my, is there a future for mining in Ecuador? Hmm. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's a, it's a country that has, has had, um, like, it seems like, <clears throat> it seems like it, you know, they're really trying, but, um, it's been so up and down and, at the same time, if you go back, you know, a decade, there there is progress. Like, you know, there are, you know, more operations and not not a massive amount, but there are some operations, there are more companies, um, and you obviously have have uh, more experience and uh over there because you you as you mentioned, um with Atico. But what do you think um in terms of of the specific candidates? Do you have a um you know, a, a, an infer can you infer or, or say other than, you know, what we've read in the news um, about what they could, what their stances could be in terms of, of you said it in, in general, but if you want to go in, in more detail about each uh, or the leading candidates. Um, let, let's, let's spend a minute talking about the history of mining in Ecuador, okay. which is not very long. I mean, there, yeah. there wasn't much mining in Ecuador. It was very fractioned, uh, you know, small scale. Um, Fruta del Norte obviously was a resounding success, but yeah. uh, that's once it changed hands a couple of times and it went through a lot of problems. And finally, Landin came in very aggressively, I think very intelligently and, and made a, a fantastic project out of it. And that became the model for what could be mining in Ecuador. And particularly for for Ecuador as a country, uh, with the you know oil revenues going down, they needed something, right? And that something really was mining. So there was a push to um, uh, to, to promote mining and promote the development of larger projects, and that's what's been going on in the last you know call it five to ten years, right? Yeah. Which isn't very long at all. No. I mean, you know, I I I, I remember when. You know, Ecuador, you take a look at Ecuador as a, as a jurisdiction and you're like, well, you know, it's got its problems and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> but all of a sudden, Ecuador becomes the darling of Latin America for mining, right? I mean, you know, when that happens, you know, you got to wonder, right, what's going on with Ecuador or with the rest of the countries, right? 
in this case, it was it was a bit of a perfect storm because the rest of mm. the countries were going down the drain. I mean, Peru's having problems. You know, Chile starts having problems. Yeah. Argentina has always been a problem. You know, Colombia starts having problems. So basically, Ecuador becomes a darling. And that's coupled with Ecuador being aggressively promoting mining, right? Um, and at Atico, for us, it was fairly clear. I mean, uh, advancing uh, our, our La Plata project that, you know, if there was a time to start building uh, La Plata, it was it was during this this government, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah. And everything was, was advancing well. And in fact, uh, you know, four or five projects were advancing well because they were put on a kind of strategic project list uh, by, by the government. Um, and then, you know, about a month ago, maybe a little less, uh, you start having social problems, which in general, I would say, are not caused by the communities where the projects are at. I mean, uh, I think most most of these projects that have been advancing um, have excellent relationships with the community and have community approval, et cetera. It was more the, you know, groups that were outside of the area of influence that started coming in and and influencing in a negative in a mm -hmm. negative way. Very much an anti mining movement like the one we've seen in Peru uh, so many times. Um, to that, you add the elections that were already uncertain and, and a couple of uh, presidential candidates that, uh, you know, are assassinated on, the, you know, on mm -hmm. coming up to the election. Um, and now you have the election, right? The election, which basically has uh, Novoa as, uh, you know, coming in second. Uh, but very much the outlier. I mean, uh, I don't think many people at all ex expected uh, Novoa to get the uh, to get into the second round. Um, mm -hmm. And you know what you have there is a phenomenon that is very much an anti Correa, right? Anti the mm -hmm. Correa establishment, which actually was, was in first place. It was expected to come out of first place, but it, it brings another twist. I mean, if that anti Correa establishment backs Novoa in, in the second round, um, you know, Novoa is a businessman, right? I mean, uh, he's, you know, pro-capital markets, et cetera. Uh, so the expectations for for the country are, are, are going to be fairly high that, you know, his pro-capital markets policies will prevail. And that would be good news for for mining, but not only for mining, for, you know, all of the sectors, you know, the the... Yeah. the uh, the issue of the judgment that that uh, that the constitutional uh, tribunal came down with, I mean, no, not only stopped the environmental approval process for mining projects, but for any environmental approval project, including, you know, my understanding is yeah. hospitals, roads, etc. So, so it, it's it's widespread in terms of of putting the country in in, in a real uh, uh, in a real mess. I was yeah. going to use some selected words that are probably not 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 good for YouTube. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to tame myself. I've been told I speak. Uh, we can with always bleep you. Language, so. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Right? But too many bleep. I mean, uh, it's embarrassing. So I mean, I, I there is there is a there is light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, light mm. that really wasn't there before Sunday's elections, yesterday's elections. Right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's a that's a good um, a good um, signal for investors that have been looking, and we we are aware of of several groups that have been you know looking as newcomers to the country, uh, and and reviewing opportunities in 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 there. Um, sometimes you know in in uh, replacing Peru. Um, in, in particular, a few cases, but um, I think well, it's it's also useful to point out before we move on to the next country that it, this is um, a runoff. So it's uh, a runoff means that there's another um, the final election. So it's a kind of it's not a primary per se, but it's it's a similar process. I'm not fully aware of, of exactly the steps, but it's not the definite election. So we have another one. And do you do you know when that the the final election general election is going to be i i believe october i believe october okay. i mean okay. you know the, the if, if really what you have and this is for most of the of the latin american countries is you have you know the election um but if if the number one placed party does not reach a certain majority ah, okay uh, then okay they have yeah. to go for 
the top two basically have a yeah. runoff and that's, yeah. that's okay so happened. it was so it was it was a general election but they didn't reach the okay so the case for argentina is different so we'll we'll go into that in in a minute okay so well, so well, that's you know, uh, sorry to interrupt you in the first election this is important um congress is, is elected okay and that's also interesting because what you've seen in the past in these kinds of elections is that uh the runner-up ends up winning the election but in the first election or in the first round, Congress is, is widely divided, but typically has the, ma the majority of the opposition to the runner up that wins. So you're faced with a candidate that wins, but has, you know, a very hostile Congress. Right. And, yeah. and you can't really do much or do what yeah. you what you're planning without doing coalitions and uh, and giving up power, if you will. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. I think we should move on to what happened in Argentina, which was a pretty, um, a big surprise, uh, to say the least. Um, do you, do you want to, I, I can start that one because I, I, I may, I may be a bit more, um, I, I mean, I know the guy. I've, I've known the guy. He's he's not new, but he's he's newish to the sort of global um, scene, and is using that uh, that limelight to um, to get more attention, which is good. Um, so the what happened in Argentina was that um, this is not a, a general election. This was a, a primary, so it was. Um, the time where different parties select their own candidates. And um, there are now three main forces and the the winning force with about 30% of, of the vote um, is this new party, relatively new. It's, it's a few years old, but it's relatively new. And the guy leading is kind of a version a local version of 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 bolsonaro and trump and a few others and he calls himself anarcho-capitalist so he doesn't believe in the big government he doesn't believe in having you know a lot of civil servants doing nothing so um he's he's been talking very um well we can talk about that in a minute but okay so that what happened is like this guy had the the lead so got the lead by surprise no one was expecting him to get to do so well and the second party was uh, with um the second party was the um the the party associated with macri with a, a former president and in third place was the current government which they're so they're so bad that they couldn't even do, I mean they've done really poorly they're horrible I don't like them anyway so uh, do you wanna do you wanna um what do you wanna say and the general election is in October so now they go into full force with their their candidates for each party selected and then they keep going until October so we'll know in October um uh, do you wanna comment on 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 that on the on I the mean, impact of I, mining I had, I had never, I had never heard Right. I had never heard of this guy, but it's like the saying goes or whatever the saying is, you know, if it walks like a duck and it swims like a duck, it's a duck. Now, this guy talks crazy. He looks crazy. I think he's crazy. Okay. Yeah, I think I mean, it's a big chance. He kind of is. Yeah. And then the thing is that, you know, no country nowadays needs that kind of crazy crazy right hmm. i mean one thing is to be radical in your thoughts and progressive in your in your ideas uh and obviously i mean who wants to have civil servants doing nothing right who wants to have 25 ministries when you could have 12 nobody right i mean we saw it well, with castillo here in peru uh, but you know, I mean, you know, it, the Peronistas, the Peronistas do do support a big government, and they control people by having them as civil servants. So, like, no, no saying I mean, when I say nobody, when I say nobody wants that, I'm not talking about the politicians. The politicians want ah, that, obviously, okay. Okay. because that's yeah, their yeah. way of, of yeah. their way 
into the establishment and, and maintaining yeah. that, uh, that that power yeah. in the establishment. Yeah. I mean, every, you know, every populist government does that to be able to maintain that that level of, of, of control and power. But when I say nobody is nobody in their right mind, right? Nobody yeah. that thinks about the benefits of you know, yeah. the, yeah. the future of the country. Yeah. And so, I mean, in that sense, you know, the fact that, the fact that he has these ideas, it's, it's great. But, you know, I'm, you know, tr actually trying to implement them is going to be very difficult. Yeah. Implementing them is going to have a lot of opposition. Okay. Um, in, in a country that's, you know, in, in a permanent state of disarray, right? I mean, and, and I've said it before, I don't think on this podcast, but, you know, a bet on Argentina is a five to 10 year bet. You don't have anything else, right? I mean, because a government, an Argentine government lasts five to 10 years, you know, independent of who the president is, you know, sort of like the term of a, of a policy in Argentina lasts five to 10 years. That's the long-term view, as long as you can go, right? Um, and if you're in mining that wants to take the 20 to 30 year view, you have to be very clear that you're going to have to go through ups and downs. And every five to 10 years, mm -hmm. you're going to have what could be a massive change in policy driven by massive economic failures, which eventually get bailed out by the IMF, the banks and everybody else who for some reason have figured that Argentina can't go bankrupt, right? Other countries, you know, we'll let them go bankrupt or we'll, we'll you know, we'll, we'll have them suffer. With Argentina, there's some kind of love-hate relationship with the capital markets or with the international markets. Maybe there's, maybe it's because there's a lot of Argentine bankers in New York. I don't know. Okay. But, but they mm -hmm. always get a bailout. Okay. Yeah. Um, they always get a bail. And, and, but, you know, mining in Argentina has always been very difficult because it's not a country that's used to mining. It's a country mm -hmm. that's used to different type of, of, of labor and, dare I say, not used to hard labor the way, hard, high intensity mm -hmm. labor, the way mining could be, particularly underground mining. And I, I know that from a couple of groups that have done underground mining there mid-scale, large-scale, and they're like, oh, my God, it's a pain in the behind to, yeah, to, to run a mine in Argentina. To the, to the point that they've taken miners from, 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 from Peru to we basically used to train hire, miners in Argentina. We used to hire, we hired um, back in the day when we were doing, um, you know, early stage and early stage to advanced stage exploration, we used to hire Peruvians. Not not for all all the positions, but you know we we had some. Well, but I mean, you know, that, that already tells you something, right? But on top of that, you know, you you have a decentralized government. So I mean, every mm -hmm. every province, if you will, yeah, has their own it. say and their own set of rules what mining is yeah. going to do or not do, or whether they want mining or not. So you don't have a support from the central government. But what you do have from the central government is very strict controls, foreign exchange controls, import controls, export controls, you know, tax controls, et cetera. So, you know, doing business in Argentina for a mining company uh, that wants to, you know, once you build it, you figured you've de-risked the project, right? I mean, in Argentina, you know, you have a constant level of risk uh, about what's going to happen next. And, you know, but Argentina has proven to have some very interesting projects, large scale projects. And, you know, if you want to be in mining uh, in Latin America, you're going to have to take that Argentina risk. And you're going to have to basically roll with the punches. I think um, my view, I mean, I don't disagree with what you've said in general, but what I do see is that the, the, there, there are ways you can operate. It's not ideal. It's not ideal that the, the, the changes in government are swing so wild that you don't know what you're um, sort of ex to expect. But at the same time, uh, the, the potential, the possibilities are there. And that's obviously we, as, as um, in this sector, you need to be, you need to see the bright side always because otherwise you wouldn't do anything. Um, but 
I think there are ways to operate and what I view as positive and with these results is that I, regardless of whether this guy in particular wins or is uh, Patricia Woolrich, which is the the the, the Juntos por Cambio, so that's the Macri, um, the new candidate from or the candidate from from that force. Um, I'm happy to see that the the Peronistas were um, were a third because they've done such a terrible job handling the pandemic and 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 moving forward after that that. I think it's uh, if you look at the map, the 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 results of of this um, this um, this um, primary elections in the in the map, you see that most of the the provinces this guy won. So especially where my family lives in Mendoza, um, like a lot of big provinces with big pockets, despite of you know what's happening but the, the, the provinces have a lot of resources we're talking you mentioned that before the, res, the resources are owned by the provinces so they they hold the the money um or the not the money but the potential money um so i think i think that's a that's a good outcome and regardless of i don't think there's gonna be a lot of of of, of uh added risk whoever wins <clears throat> because Whoever wins, I think is going to be um, better. So if if we have party one with Millet or or, or Junto por el Cambio um, with Bullrich, either of them are going to be a a, a better option. So um, than the Peronistas. And and to be fair to them, they haven't they haven't done any any damage to mining in particular specifically. Uh, they've damaged the country in general. They haven't been selective, so that's uh, that's we have to say that um, in in their defense, which is not my place. So let's let's leave that there. <laughs> Listen, you know, I I think in the end the guy's rhetoric over and above it being colorful, you know, it's it's it it makes you wonder how he's going to do whatever he says he's going to do, right? Uh, without putting the the country's economy uh, yeah. in, in certain peril and a social situation in certain peril, and and that's you know Glencore just just acquired you know the whatever it didn't have of of uh, Mara right Mara you know mm -hmm. developing Mara is gonna you know four billion dollars you know yep. five yeah you gotta you gotta think very carefully before putting in five billion dollars in a country that economically is already fragile and has the potential to get be a lot more fragile unless you really believe what i was saying at the beginning that you know argentina always gets bailed out so it'll be fine i think i i used to say this when i was living still living there and and we would get new clients and they would always ask you know about argentina and and um and i used to say that there's these cycles where you know there's some good stuff happening and then everybody's relatively fine and then a crisis comes and then everything comes down and then comes up again and it's like this you mentioned it and it's kind of five to ten year cycles and but the problem is you can't build build up because you're always going back to zero or near zero so you have to build from scratch again which is not how you build wealth and and uh, but i i am hopeful I mean, and i think yep go ahead in the end right you have it, it's the five to ten year thing right i mean you you have a mind plan right i mean that's what miners do they do a mind plan the mind plan has you know 10 15 year mind plan or, you know basically it matches the reserves and resources you know, so you have this mine plan, you build the mine, you have a mine plan, and the mine plan is going to go on because the mine's going to continue, right? But that mine plan has an economic model, and that economic model is what drives, you know, these companies to invest the, the X hundreds of millions or billions of dollars that they're going to invest, and they have this plan. And just when you're getting comfortable with the plan, whether it's in year four or year eight or nine, you're really comfortable with the plan, boom, something happens, <laughs> And the plan changes, right? And your economic model changes and, and all of your assumptions change. You know, 
Yeah. You know, hopefully you have other projects that, that that are a hedge against an Argentina, right? I mean, that's the geographic diversification, but but you but never really one, know. And um, we do have to say that there's there's been every mine that was built in Argentina operated and went through the whole process. And, um, uh, there's never been um, uh, a privatization yeah. or a mine that had to shut down before, like um, at a time that wasn't the plan. So everything that was shut down was because it ran the life of mine. And so we do have to say that in in in, in for 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 clarity. But um, look, I think I think the 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 for copper. Argentina has a lot of copper that has, it's kind of ready. So because of the problems of, of what you mentioned, like companies like Glencore and BHP and Rio, or not not willing, or no, and others, not willing or able to put 5 billion or 6 billion or, or, or this big ticket, um, you know, um, uh, uh, sort of pools of money in there because of the risk. There's a lot of projects that are kind of very ready, and there's there's been changes like Makiwe Mining. Um, the, one of the projects that they have is uh, Los Azules, which is a project in 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 San Juan that we worked for many years, and that has some serious backing now. So they they've uh, they um, they spun that out to another company to. Um, to uh, I think it's going to list late late this year, but it already has Celantis and uh, the automaker and uh, Rio Tinto, uh, uh, an arm of Rio Tinto with backing them. So I think there's going to be it's kind of there's a lot of competitors running like they're you know they're far away from the like halfway through the the, the race, but all the countries have a lot more that are behind. So. I think if if there's some um, stability for a little bit longer, I think we're gonna see a lot of copper come on stream from Argentina. Hopefully, I hope that. I think uh, I think the the resources are, are there. My dad used to say that copper was. I may have said this before, but he used to say that copper was like yeah, everybody look at gold and silver and like yeah, it's fantastic. But for instance, and lithium, obviously, we're big in lithium, but copper argentina is gonna be the copper country so you know we'll see we'll see the, the resources are there just to just to finish up on that i mean i i maybe i was sounding too negative on argentina there's one thing that i completely agree with you the resources are there and the projects will get built okay because in the end what people are looking for are the copper units okay yeah. now i don't think any cfo is going to tell you that he's happy about you know the project in Argentina, because in the yeah. end, what once you've built it and you've gone through it and you're producing, you will produce the copper, you will export the copper. The fact that you're not going to be able to take the money out of Argentina becomes, you know, a that will story. change. That I a think I view that's never, you know, that was the case. Uh, that's been the case with the Kirchners, and it was like then Macri removed that restriction. And then the the Peronistas, uh, the Kirchner and, and the Fernandez came back and they put them back in. But it's not something that is intrinsic to the country. It's just because these guys are so crap, sorry, so bad with money that but they need to they need to do that. It's, it's happened four times in my career, yeah. right? And I'm not that old. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, I mean, yeah. it is intrinsic. It yeah. is the five. Years. I mean, but anyway, I mean, listen, uh, I mean, uh, like that, well, I, I'm I'm a bit younger, so maybe I missed a couple, a couple, a couple. We'll we'll, we'll see. I, yeah. I I don't I don't think it's uh, what I think is the intrinsic is the crisis and the, the valleys, the mountains and the valleys. I think that's intrinsic. So that's um, something that needs to be worked on, and uh, we'll, we'll move on because we'll be we've been on this topic for a bit longer. <laughs> than we thought but um but i think one 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 last comment that i was gonna make about this guy who by the way i think i think my one of my cousins uh, my cousin nelson um who's like a brother uh, i think he's 
super keen on on that guy. I think he's. I've heard him say a lot of good things about him. But in his defense, on this guy, the last thing is he did say um, this is a fifteen to thirty year process. So yeah, it can't be done in a year or two years or five. Anyway, we should move on, Lucho. We talk if we were to hear from our audience, right? I mean, I'd love to ask someone else who has experience in Ecuador or has a project in Ecuador how they're looking at this, at these swings of the last uh, of the last couple of months, right? And you know, in terms of, of of projects in Chile and what's going on in Chile, I mean, what is what is their view, right? I mean, what what's the view of the people in 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 uh, in Chile in terms of the projects and and what's going to come uh, with what Boric is doing? Uh, but you know, it would be great to hear to hear from some from some people that are holding projects in Chile, particularly, you know, development projects, projects in 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 you know an early to advanced stage of development of how they're viewing uh, the future post board. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna have a, a new section where we we take a question that we've received through social media and we're gonna um, make our best attempt at a response <laughs> okay i'll read the question um okay so this one is from h fox 2 on threads because for some reason i have like nothing there and for some reason he decided to use that platform anyway so um, this was in response to um, our, we were talking about BHP and Rio. And he said, um, BHP haven't done any exploration for lithium. So need, they need to look at m and activity to enter the lithium space and EV battery supply chain. Rio, this is his, his uh, asserting this. And then the question comes. Rio acquired the lithium, uh, Rincon Lithium brand project in Argentina in March 2022 for 825 million not without with some technical DLE issues. Now, the question, how do you see these two giants expanding their portfolios? Will Rio look to acquire a hard rock spodumene project, project or expand with more brine m and Are BHP and Rio in danger of missing out on huge lithium revenue streams? Do you wanna, do you wanna start? Uh, we have to sort of, um, disclaim this by um, BHP doesn't do lithium. They don't act in the space. So, but we will we'll get into detail. What I do mean, you think? lithium is the flavor, of, the flavor of the month, right? I mean, everybody wants to get into lithium. It's one of the critical metals. I mean, you know, it, it it's going to attract investors, et cetera. Uh, as a business, uh, you know, lithium is very profitable. Right, uh, particularly you've got if if you got into it early on, um, yeah. it, it, like any mining venture, it, it's going to have a uh, you know a time, uh, a period in which you can get in, and 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 it takes time, right? You know the typical five to ten years. Um, I guess that the if you talk about the mining giants like like BHP and Rio, or any of the others, you know Glencore. Uh, for example, are they going to miss out on the huge revenue streams of lithium? That's a tougher one, uh, Paola, to be honest. I mean, the, lit the revenue streams of lithium are nothing compared to the revenue streams of any of these giants, right? It's not enough to move the needle, right? I mean, it, clear example is Codelco in Chile getting into lithium, right? A five hundred million dollar project. I mean, a Maricunga project, for example. If they, if Codelco wanted to build Maricunga, right, the the, the one that's held by Lithium Power International, that's seven hundred million dollars. I mean, yeah. that's literally a drop in the bucket on the you know five billion dollars that Codelco has to invest over the next five to ten years, right? Yeah. I don't even know the numbers, but but that's the thing. And and the revenue and and income that they're going to get from from that lithium stream of that one project is really irrelevant compared to what they need to do on the on the copper side. I think the only way for and and Rio, as, as you said, I mean, 
Rio's already in with Rincon, but Rio had the, the project in uh, in Albania, I think it was, right? That that in the end yeah, that, uh, yeah. left but it's, the side. Yeah, it's, it, it, it yeah, it's not it. moving. Yeah. So I mean they had a, they already had some some history of wanting to get into lithium, but I think the only way for any of these giants to get into lithium is to actually come in and do a major acquisition of yeah. one of the players that's already there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, a, a lithium Americas, you know, a, you know, an Oro Cobra. I mean, yeah, something that's already there or, you know, even take a, a portion of SQM or Albemarle, right? Or, or yeah. live it. And, you know, there, there's very few players there. And I'm sure that that's a consideration. If you want to get into the lithium business, it doing it piecemeal by, by buying some projects, whether it be Brines or Spodumene, isn't really going to move the needle for them. It's actually going to become a distraction, yeah. in my view. Yeah, I, I, I agree 100%. Uh, 100%. So I think we, we can leave that. Oh, and I think um, we could add um, if, if you have, like the, you viewer, if you have a, um, a suggestion for, for uh, these companies, what could they buy? Could they buy Lithium Americas? Could they buy, which one would you suggest for, for Rio to buy? BHP, as, as I said, um, it's not really in Lithium. They, they, they are focused on iron ore, copper, and all the, all the metals. And uh, yeah, everything else yeah, Lucho said is, is perfect. So I think we are going to move on to the last topic, which was we wanted just to briefly touch on um, these um, news reports that said that um, um, a report by Sesco, which is a, a sort of association body um, focus on CESC on on copper in Chile, they came out with a report saying that uh, at the current pace with the current debt weight that Codelco has, they could get to um, a point where the existing 18 billion um, debt could go to 30 billion by 2030. And uh, that's that doesn't sound good at all. What, what are your thoughts about this? Cadelco is the state of Chile. Yeah. Hence, it's never going to go bankrupt. Yeah. That's it, right? I mean, you know, to, trying, Ooh, trying to pretend Delco is a corporate, uh, you know, it, it's not. It's, it's not your typical corporate, right? I mean, Cadelco yeah. for years, for, for decades, uh, because of a you know, a, a, a government mandate, or I mean, for, because of legislation, had to give 10% of their revenues to the military, yeah. right? I mean, that, that, was, that was going on for decades. I mean, that would never happen with a corporate. I mean, the fact that it has a level of corporate governance, et cetera, uh, is, is the only reason why Cadelco is actually not a, a, a bankrupt public enterprise like many others in Latin America, or I would imagine around the world, right? Yeah. That, that's what saved them. But to actually uh, pretend that Cadelco is going to go bankrupt because it has too much debt, you know, could, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, or I assume, but I'm pretty sure that Cadelco bonds trade pretty much in line with Chile's sovereign bonds, it sovereign should. debt. So I that's don't know. not really the concern. Right? Mm. The concern. The biggest concern is what is Cadelco going to do uh, to maintain its competitive edge in a growing and very competitive copper market? Okay. But it, it's uh, lost in, the, in, in the a, first in, place a couple of times. So last year, um, um, Freeport was briefly first in output. And then this, uh, the first quarter of this year, BHP got first. So, so that, that is happening. So even though I agree with what you're saying, like they're not going to go, like, it's not a regular entity. It's never going to be allowed to go bankrupt, but, um, it's losing prominence. It's the output, Chile's output is falling and they are, you know, the bulk of, you know, I, I don't know exactly how much of the, of the, of the whole output, but it's a significant portion. So 
yeah. Well, I mean, and, and just a, just a brief comment. I mean, what what a, a if Cadelco was a true corporate, it probably would not have focused so much on projects in Chile and on continuing developing projects within its own pipeline that are going deeper and costlier and stuff like that. They would have looked elsewhere. The only place they've looked elsewhere is in Ecuador, and they've had a hell of a bad time, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they those guys have serious community. What I've heard is that they have serious community issues in their projects in Ecuador, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, the natural place for Canelco to look for projects was Argentina, and that'll never happen because, you know, the, 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 they've the, done they've done some the, work um, yes but i mean you know in general i would say paula but my experience is that chileans don't like to invest in argentina okay that's sort yeah, of like there, a, there, a, a there blanket, are there are there are some some animosities but i don't think it's that important and, and, and I, but i would say that politically it's tough for cadelco to actually look elsewhere for other copper projects right i mean cadelco is one of the best copper mining companies in the world. I mean, in that, mm. you know, they have a track record of that. Mm. They should be able to walk into any country and develop and, and develop projects when they find a good project, right? Um, mm. But but they really haven't done much of that. So, you know, Cadelco is not your usual corporate. Uh, you know, I, I think Cadelco needs to start deciding what, what they're going to do. For a very long time, it was it was talked about, you know, listing part of uh, Cadelco in a, in a foreign exchange, you know, a portion. Mm. I mean, that's, that actually starts opening the doors towards having more independence on the on the board and more, you know, a greater pool of investors that you have to satisfy, right? Yeah. I mean, right now, Cadelco has to satisfy one investor, the Chilean government, basically yeah. portrayed by the president at the time, yeah, right, yeah, you know, so you know, that's yeah. not really a big challenge. Mm. Well, yeah, but they've lost, like, they're, they're going to have three CEOs in less than a year or a year, a bit over a year. Uh, it, it, I don't think it's getting easier, but I, it maybe maybe the, the, the fact that they are supposed to be, you know, the, the country um, or, or using the resources that the country has, um, maybe that's, that restriction is seriously impairing their, I mean, it is, I think, impairing their, their potential for, for more. And um, yeah, I, I would like to see a listing. That would be, that would be an interesting, um, I don't know if it will ever happen, but it would be interesting for sure. All right, so you you really don't don't see any uh, yeah maybe you know I I was surprised with this report because Sesco is usually pretty sort of you know um, I, I was I was surprised that Ses that Sesco actually you know put out that report to be honest I mean and I I mean they're a think tank and they're a think tank on copper and on copper in Chile so I guess you know the only the only company they can really talk about really is is Codelco, right? And uh, yeah. you know, it, it's a it's a good it, it's a good uh it's a good exercise for sure, but um yeah, we'll have to see. Yeah. All right. All right, I think we're going to leave it there. Um that's it it's from us. Um you'll find extra sources and links in the description. If you found this useful please please share it with your peers. And uh, now, now you get to sign off, Lucha. You take us out. All right. Well, good to see you again, Paola. Excellent conversation. What was supposed to be 30 minutes was 47 minutes. So as usual, you know, I think I've talked my piece for more than enough. <laughs> um, questions from, from the viewers, uh, pass it on. Please uh, send us questions, pass on the link, and uh, we'll see you the next time. All right. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you from you in the comments below. Lucho and I will be back in two weeks. Until then, here's another related episode you may like to watch next. Bye.